The dangers of deferring estate tax. That's the subject of today's ActTech Trust and Estate Talk. Welcome to ActTech Trust and Estate Talk from the American College of Trust and Estate Council, a professional society of peer elected trust and estate lawyers in the United States and around the globe. This series offers professionals best practice advice, insights, and commentary on subjects that affect our profession and clients. And now, our ActTech Fellow host with today's topic. This is Jim Milton, ActTech Fellow from Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the estate consists of qualifying business interests. Internal Revenue Code Section 6166 allows the estate tax to be paid over 14 years. Business owners tend to underestimate the impact of this deferral, generating liens that can undermine the business's ability to maintain or extend credit or surety bonds. ActTech Fellow Steve Gorin of St. Louis, Missouri joins us today to provide an overview of the liens that are involved and why business owners should seek to avoid relying on this deferral. Welcome, Steve. Thank you so much, Jim. So when a decedent dies, because of course that's what decedents do, and if there's estate tax due, then a secret automatic estate tax lien under code section 6324 applies. And this secret automatic estate tax lien is as of the date of the decedent's death. It's not recorded anywhere and it applies to uh, assets from a probate estate uh, or let's suppose the business were held in a revocable trust, then the majority opinion is that it also applies to the trustee of the revocable trust and the personal assets of the trustee of the revocable trust are subject to the secret automatic lien. And I, I would bet that 99.99% of trustees do not know they're signing up for this uh, when this situation occurs. So you've got this secret automatic lien and this secret automatic lien lasts for 10 years. Now, let's say you've got this estate tax deferral and so, you know, estate taxes due nine months after, after date of death. Then you have four years of interest and then you have 10 years of principal and interest. So you've got this going on for 14 years and nine months after the decedent dies. So let's think about this secret automatic lien and the fact that it lasts only 10 years, whereas the estate tax liability is getting paid over a period exceeding 14 years. So as you can tell, the IRS needs something to protect itself, you know, for that last four or five years. So what the IRS does is first, when a person claims this automatic extension of time to pay, the IRS will kind of look at the credit worthiness of the estate. Does it look like it can all pay it back fine? And generally it assumes that it will be paid back okay. And then after several years go by, I think about six now, the IRS will take another look and say, okay, we know that there's going to be a gap coming up here. What do we think about securing these payments over the gap? Do we think that the estate's fine and it's, we don't need to do anything special to secure that gap? Or do we think we need to get a lien on some assets to help secure for that gap. Now, the IRS used to automatically say, I'm getting that lien. And then in the case called Roski, R-O-S-K-I, the task court slapped down the IRS and said, you have to exercise your discretion and evaluate whether you think that lien is necessary. So along comes the IRS. And I mean, the other thing that goes along with this is that the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, or TICTA, also said to IRS, well, you've been letting these things go and not protecting yourself well enough. So we, we had a, a little mixed signals the IRS was getting between the TIGDA people saying, you got to watch out and collect that tax, and the tax court saying, you got to exercise discretion and not be too harsh on taxpayers. So basically, it comes down, the IRS does have to look at things, but generally, the IRS is going to want to get a lien imposed on some assets. Now, the tax laws allow the executor of the estate, uh, which may be the trustee of the revocable trust, to select which assets are used to satisfy that lien. So a lot of times, IRS will say, 
hey, let's suppose you got this operating business here. Give me a lien on the operating business's real estate. And the executor or trustee's response would be, sorry, the real estate is not what was included in the estate. It was the business interest itself that was included in the estate. So yeah, I'll give you a lien on my stock or my LLC or partnership interest or whatever that is, but I'm not going to give you a lien on that real estate. So the, the trustee or executor is allowed to do that if they're counseled well enough to know that they can resist when the IRS asks to get something that's not entitled to. So then you get this express lien that gets attached to this business interest. So we had the secret automatic lien that nobody even notices, and then you get this express lien. So why do we really care about all of this? Well, most businesses have a line of credit that they use to finance their inventory or finance their other operations or finance their accounts receivable. Or maybe if you have a construction company, they have a surety bond. And basically those lenders or bond companies, you know, they are looking at the business's credit and they also look at the credit of the owners of the business. And they often have these various debt covenants that say, hey, you have to have your financial statement looking a certain way that's really solid because we want to make sure that you're going to pay us and that your obligations to other people are not going to interfere with that. So each time you are applying for credit, technically the trustee or executor needs to disclose the secret automatic lien that they might not even know about. And certainly when you have a lien that actually appears in the public records, when the IRS is going back to secure you know, the estate tax uh, down the road, I mean, that's definitely going to appear in the records. And so the lender or the bond company might be a little bit upset that the finances of the executor or trustee are not quite what they thought it would be. So you could get your line of credit yanked or you could get your surety bond yanked. Uh, of course, a construction company without a surety bond, where do they go? They go out of business. So really think hard before relying on this estate tax deferral. Instead, do some of the tools that ActTech fellows often use to try to get businesses outside of the estate tax system. And in the meantime, while you're using those tools, consider getting some term life insurance to fill the gap until those assets are actually outside the estate tax system. I hope this has been helpful and will help you protect your clients, help their loved ones. Thank you, Steve, for this great information and for the warnings about the super secret IRS liens. We may be the only people talking about that today, but I'm delighted to have talked about it with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of AgTech Trust and Estate Talk the podcast series about wealth planning matters from the American College of Trust and Estate Counsel. To find an ACTEC lawyer near you, visit actec.org. Please subscribe to this series and leave us a rating or a review. Thank you.